Hi everyone, I am Shahan Laik. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I will discuss a very important topic on medicine known as Vogd Koyanagi Harada syndrome. Vogd Koyanagi Harada syndrome. This is very very important. Vogd Koyanagi Harada. So, what is this syndrome? Let us uh, discuss about it. So, first we'll learn the definition of Vogd Koyanagi Harada syndrome. This is also known as the VKH syndrome. Okay, VKH, Vogt Kayanagi Harada. So, what is the definition? First, the definition, idiopathic. So, the cause is unknown. Idiopathic, multi-system. So, many system will be involved. Idiopathic, multi-system, autoimmune condition. Basically, this is a autoimmune conditions. And it is idiopathic. The cause is unknown. And many systems are involved. So, three important features. Idiopathic, multi-system, autoimmune, featuring the inflammation of melanocyte. This is very important. Inflammation of melanocyte. So, which cells are involved? Melanocytes. Melanocytes. Involvement of inflammation of melanocyte very important the melanocytes which are present in our different tissues like the skin like the uvr tissue all the ear meninges all these will be inflamed so inflammation of melanocytes containing tissues like uvr like ear and meninges so this is the definition so our meninges will be affected uvr ear all these things will be affected so once again, what is Vogt Koyanagi Harada syndrome, VK8 syndrome? It is idiopathic multi-system autoimmune disease. Idiopathic multi-system autoimmune disease, and it is featuring inflammation of the melanocytes containing tissue like the uvr, ear, and meninges. Now let us learn what is the predominant of this disease. In which place it is predominant? It is predominant in Japan, in the Japanese people, in the Hispanics and in the pigmented individuals. Now uh, in uh, this disease is actually associated with which HLA? This may come into question. HLA-DR1 and HLA-DR4. These two HLAs are involved. HLA-DR1 and HLA-DR4. And basically, in practice, we do not get this Vogt Koyanagi Harada syndrome. We basically, we in practice, we get Vogt Koyanagi disease and Harada disease. So, we get as a separate entity. We do not get as it as a full, like VKH. We do not get VKH. We get VK and we get H, separate. So, we get VK once and we get Harada. So, VK means Vogt Koyanagi disease and we get Harada disease. Okay, so what happens in Vogt Kainagi? In Vogt Kainagi, you have vitiligo and uveitis, basically anterior uveitis. You know, uveitis is the inflammation of the middle layer of the eye, middle layer of the eye, anterior uveitis. Along with that, you get vitiligo, that is the skin pigmentation is lost. That is why you are getting Vitiligo. I told you this disease will affect the melanocytes. The melanocytes. Which cell? Melanocytes. So, vitiligo will be there in the skin. And uveitis, that is the middle layer of the eye, which contains the choroid and all these things. So, it will be affected. Uveitis. Anterior uveitis. Inflammation. Next is the Harada disease. Harada disease, I told you, it is basically the neurological and retinal detachment so in the nerve and the retina will be affected neurological and retinal detachment so retina will be detached and neurological symptoms will be there in harada disease so vogt kyanagi and harada two types in uh, where we can find in clinical practice in clinical practice we do not get vkh directly we get vogt kyanagi and we get harada two types. Vogt Kionagi is the vitiligo and uveitis. Vitiligo is the skin of the skin involvement, uveitis of the anterior eye, anterior portion and Harada we get the neurological and retinal detachment. Now what are the trigger factors for this disease? The trigger factors are cutaneous injury. Cutaneous injury, if there is a skin injury, if there is any vital infection, that can actually sensitize the 
melanocytes and this will sensitize the skin melanocytes you know pigment forming cell melanocytes that will be sensitized because of the skin injury because of the viral infection so all these are very important so these are the trigger factors now let us learn into the phases of this disease which is also very important the first phase of this disease is the prodromal phase can you see the first phase prodromal phase in prodromal phase you get meningitis neck stiffness headache so first you will get the meningitis symptoms headache all the meningitis symptoms okay in prodromal phase before the acute phase what is prodromal phase before the acute phase has set up before the acute set uh, acute phase has set up you get prodromal phase in prodromal phase you will get the meningitis neck, neck stiffness headache encephalopathy the brain involvement and also the auditory symptoms what are the auditory symptoms you will have tinnitus vertigo and deafness so you will have tinnitus vertigo and the deafness okay these are the auditory symptoms you will get now we will get go to the acute phase of the disease in acute phase you will have the anterior uveitis this is very very important acute phase you will have anterior uveitis and retinal detachment acute phase mainly the eye will be involved the eye will be involved so anterior uveitis and retinal detachment you will get in the acute phase now in the convalescent phase convalescent phase act, uh, appears several weeks after the convalescent phase appears several weeks after the disease has been occurring in the acute phase so after acute phase several weeks after the acute phase you are having convalescent phase so always remember where is the convalescent phase lies the convalescent phase lies several weeks after several weeks later the acute phase several weeks later the acute phase is the convalescent phase in convalescent phase you will have the localized alopecia yes you will have localized alopecia alopecia you know the small amount of hair loss alopecia and poliosis what is poliosis poliosis is the white patching of the hair white coloration of the hair in specific region of the head but the other region of the head is the black that is the poliosis that is the poliosis that is whitening of hair in a specific region another is vitiligo that is the skin changes the skin becomes white is coloration due to depigmentation that is vitiligo other things is the chronic other phase is the chronic recurrent phase in chronic recurrent phase you will be having smoldering anterior uveitis that means the anterior uveitis now will be exaggerated will be inflamed will be more so smoldering anterior uveitis with exaggeration this will be found in the chronic phase so the again again the uveitis that was there in the anterior phase will come back in chronic and recurrent phase anterior uveitis and exacerbation now let us come into the treatment of the disease the treatment is high dose prednisolone yes high dose prednisolone of 60 to 100 mg per day that is given high dose prednisolone along with that you can give iv methyl prednisolone of 500 to 1000 mg per day so high dose of prednisolone 60 to 100 mg per day along with iv methyl prednisolone 500 to 1000 mg per day now if a patient is steroid resistant what will we give for steroid resistant patient we give cyclosporine cyclosporine now let us go into a question to solve which of the following causes uveitis vitiligo and deafness so which of the following causes uveitis vitiligo and deafness we have the options starch weber syndrome centurion syndrome Alexandrini syndrome and Vogt Kiernogi Harada syndrome this came in DNB 2014 so which of the following causes uveitis vitiligo and deafness so we have three feature uveitis is there vitiligo is there so we can understand from uveitis and vitiligo it is melanocytes that are affected and 
stiffness is there. So we will go for the Vogt Kiyonagi Harada syndrome. Vogt Kiyonagi Harada syndrome. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like this video make a thumbs up and please subscribe our channel for getting many more videos like this. Have a nice day. Bye bye.